Hi, I'm Tim Zacharias with Cougar USA and your host of Building Value. We are back on site at the Houston Zoo today. Uh, if you remember, we've done an episode out here with Kali Hodges and we talked about uh, the design of the zoo, some of the changes that have been happening over the years. And today we really got to experience that firsthand through the Galapagos exhibit. So Kali took us through the front of the house and you know we get to see all of the things that uh, kind of make this exhibit unique, that transformation from animal specific exhibits into these big, large habitats uh, that, that you definitely can see through the Galapagos. And then Mark Hoffman, head of uh, engineering and design for the zoo, takes us behind the scenes, behind the gates, to really see what it takes to keep that water quality and life systems going for these animals. It's really cool combination of the kind of systems that we would normally see in a, in a building, especially like a hospital or a central plant, applied in a very different way, uh, it, you know, these large aquariums to keep these animals alive and healthy. So, uh, you know, really excited for today's episode to be able to showcase that Galapagos exhibit here at the Houston Zoo. On Building Value, we go behind the scenes of building operations to showcase the people and products that make buildings work and the value they bring to the community. All right, we are at the Houston Zoo this morning in front of the brand new Galapagos Island exhibit. Joined with the Houston Zoo Sustainability Manager, Kali Hodges. Thanks for being on the show again. Hey, Tim, so, good to see you. Uh, yeah, excited to uh, check out this exhibit, both from kind of a front of a house perspective here, you know, show off the things that are normally seen from the exhibit, but we're also gonna get a chance to go behind the scenes and see what it takes to make this happen. So, Colin, why don't you, can you give us a little bit of background just about the exhibit in general and kind of what the goal was with, with the Galapagos exhibit? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the Galapagos Islands exhibit is kind of the biggest piece of our $150 million centennial capital campaign. Sure. And one of the final pieces uh, alongside our Jack's Cafe and Event Center that's uh, taking place, uh, at the construction's in the old um, Sea Lion home. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, exhibit is, like a lot of our exhibits, based on partnerships that we have elsewhere in, in the world. So we have a number of partnerships in the Galapagos. Uh, and um, this is a chance for us to basically communicate to our guests that we share an ocean with the Galapagos yep. uh, and you can actually reduce threats to wildlife here at home and therefore ensure a healthy ocean for the rest of the world. Right. Um, so yeah, one of our larger construction projects, uh, about uh, $72 million. Wow. Yep. Um, two and a half acres-ish. Um, about uh, 850 feet of uh, pedestrian pathway that you know that we're gonna we're gonna mm -hmm. walk today. Um, yeah, I and mean, that's that's sort of some of the big the big you know numbers uh, and, and the story you know behind it. It's really cool. I mean, I know we talked about it last time, kind of how the zoo is landlocked and you know to yeah. fit this big of an exhibit into the zoo must have been a challenge. And I know last time we were here, it kind of was under construction, and so it's really cool to kind of see it done and uh, and open and going. So it, one of the things I was you know kind of looking into a little bit around the Galapagos Islands, but you know the the significance of that and like the amount of. Uh, different species crammed into one space and you know obviously with Charles Darwin doing all his research there so just kind of a cool to be able to bring all that to, to the zoo. Yeah exactly and, and those who don't know you know about the Galapagos so it's basically on the equator kind of off the coast of, of Ecuador and it's uh, because of the isolation of the islands there's this fascinating diversity in, in the animals and a lot of a lot of the animals and plants there are not found anywhere else in the world right. so this is the the first um, really major exhibit in the world is focusing on the Galapagos Islands and you know you, you were kind of talking about that you know this is a chance really to um, immerse people in that uh, that bio you know region mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's something that all the modern exhibits at Houston Zoo right. are doing you know over the years zoos have really shifted from being just places of recreation to conservation organizations right. and the way the physical environment has changed is really interesting with that. You know, we've kind of shifted from those more taxonomical exhibits to these biogeographic regions that we're trying to immerse people in. Right. Uh, and you'll see plenty of examples of, of that here. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I mean, if we can kind of walk yeah, over to the sea it. lines now, I think that's kind of the best example uh, so far, like one of the most stark examples for me, like, you know, have those memories walking into the zoo and seeing that, that kind of classic yeah. zoo exhibit with the sea lions. And then now to see this, it's like totally different. Uh, kind of set up. Yeah, yeah. So this, um, you know, we have we have nine sea lions here, five of which um, were already in uh, their former home. Um, but with this habitat, they're now in a, a quarter million gallon uh, habitat. Um, 
it's uh, I know you're going to get into the water quality stuff with with Mark. So yep. I'll try to like not tread on that too no, much. No, you know, yeah, it's funny. I was, we we're looking at it earlier. I was looking at this giant glass wall and it, like calculating how much pressure was on. Oh yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till we get inside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, you can see that you know, the rock work and everything is designed to replicate what you would see in the Galapagos. Um, there's even kind of touches of of the guano and the, the uh, you know the the kind of tidal zones that are mm -hmm. indicated on the side. Yep. Uh, those are all um, intentional in, in trying to, to depict what what you would actually see yeah. in, in the Galapagos Islands. Um, the uh, there's a couple of, of places that the animals can shift in and out, um, uh, and you'll we'll look at the back side of some of those here uh, in a minute. Um, but well, interestingly, it's not just the animals that, uh, that are unique in the Galapagos, but the, the flora is as well. So a lot of the plants here are either designed to mimic plants that are in the Galapagos. They're sort of analogs of, of what you would see in okay. the Galapagos. Interesting. Or they're, they're sculpted exhibitry that's designed to mimic that. And, and that's something important to note here too. So uh, the species in Galapagos are, are protected. So what you're seeing uh, in this exhibit are, are kind of ambassador animals that are, okay. are relatives of what you would see in the Galapagos. Gotcha. And there's only kind of one exception to that, which is our, our Galapagos tortoises that, that were raised in, in human care. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah, so these sea lions are actually California sea lions. They're not the exact type you'd see in, in the Galapagos. But, sure. Um, so here, you know, we're kind of passing through what, what are designed to replicate these kind of lava, uh, lava channels um, that, you know, that are carved through the Galapagos Islands. That's cool. Yeah. So this exhibit, this is for our uh, Galapagos tortoises. Um, we got a nice kind of little photo op. Uh, okay, yeah. In, in the yeah. Th this is really neat too, just as an aside. Um, this is indicating kind of a different, different evolution of um, tortoise shells. Okay. Depending on which part of the island they're in, they have different adaptations. Oh, and weird. Some of them, their shells evolve to be kind of higher to where they can reach further up oh, to, wow. to eat. Uh, from cactuses and different vegetation. And uh, interestingly, the vegetation also evolved as a defense to this. And like, <laughs> it keeps getting higher up and woodier oh, bark. Wow. Uh, so I, I, Mark has one of the best observations about that. It's like the world's slowest arms race or like the slowest, you know, <laughs> yeah, punch and counter go. punch. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. But you can see a few in the yeah. distance and we'll probably catch a better view of them. Sometimes they like to be up uh, underneath a, a heated cove inside the exhibit. But, nice. Um, yeah, these tortoises, uh, I think the, the oldest ones are around 30 years old and about 200 pounds, the oldest Whoa. and the biggest, but they lived over 100. Um, they, uh, they're actually surprisingly pretty good climbers. They enjoy the hills. So one thing I think that's interesting, this is like a good example of it, um, that shift to more like biogeographic regions mm -hmm. I talked about, uh, that happened around the 1980s. And there was a landscape design firm that um, uh, specialized in exhibit design for zoos. And they listed out some sort of rules for, for immersive exhibit design. Sure. Uh, and those have really become these, these best practices. And they involve things like giving animals choice. Um, high, low, sunny, shady, wet, dry. Uh, the ability to remove themselves from, from stress. Um, also things like just having um, a you know, certain relationship with the viewer and the animal where you're not above looking down or where you can't see across and see other, other guests. Um, okay, so, that makes sense. Yeah, it's really interesting once you kind of peek behind the curtain on, on, on that, you start to see those those themes in a lot of these exhibits and they work really well. Yeah, that's cool. And then like the natural kind of barriers between, you know, so especially like in the gorilla exhibit, I feel like yeah. you don't, you feel like you're really close, but then you look and it's like, okay, well, I really hope they can't jump that, oh, right, right. <laughs> that, that gap right. and get to us. But, you know, like you said, making it more of a seamless experience to the animals yeah. uh, and to be able to still view. You got another, another there's guy. another little guy he's, down he's there. He's creeping yeah. on our conversation. He is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very curious. Yeah, but, but it, it makes for a better, a better environment for the animals as well as a better sure. relationship, you know, with, with the viewers. And there's other things too, like just have, not having big, uh, uh, dramatic effects that distract from the animals. Not huge waterfalls or, or right. human artifacts in an exhibit. But makes sense. It's pretty interesting. Makes sense. So this is sort of an example of, of what I was talking about, where again they have a chance to, to have, have a different environment, remove themselves from you know the main exhibit. Uh, they do like to hang out here. This is a, a heated um, kind of uh, alcove here. Yep. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is also just from a, another kind of design comment. Uh, obviously, we're in a vestibule, 
So you know, required for energy code, another means to turn it into an exhibit. And it's, it's also this example of kind of playing with space. So starting from big, wide, open area mm -hmm. to a more compressed, yep. intimate area, and then and then back out again. It's cool. Um, should check out the iguanas too. Um, so again, these are not the exact iguanas that you would see in, in the Galapagos Islands. Um, but oh, he's way up there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw the I saw the kind of the sculptures on the way in. Yeah. So this uh, there's you know, obviously it's open to um, to above there, introducing natural light for the iguanas. Um, there's a couple of females and a male, um, and the design of the exhibit allowed the females to kind of climb higher. And there's some spots that they can get in that the males can just the male can't just to. Get uh, some time away from, but uh, <laughs> I'm guessing the male's the big one hiding. I, there. I, I'm assuming so. Yeah, yeah. but um, it's cool. Yeah, and there's other little little design features. Um, the the way the glass is angled and and you know the ceiling, the colors just to kind of reduce glare. Let's cool. move on to the sea cave. Ah, uh, you got the backside of the sea lions. Yeah. So again, you see that kind of smaller space to a larger space. Yep. Um, this is our sea cave where you get another view of the sea lions, uh, as well as Sally Lightfoot crabs, some other crabs over there in a smaller, um, a smaller exhibit. There you go. But yeah, first time you really get a chance to see them swimming. Um, but there's sort of a hole in the rock back there. I'm not sure if you can catch it on camera that they like to swim through. Mm. Um, but this is also uh, one of the areas where they can shift on and off exhibit. Um, but yeah, the, you know, it's been. The, the, you'll see an even better example of the, the thickness of the acrylic when we get into the sea lion tunnel. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is a chance just to kind of get uh, a lot closer to them. You can climb the rock and, and you know, kids can see the sea lions from other, other angles. Um, the whole kind of path, the journey of this exhibit is really from you know, the land down into the ocean. So this is kind of getting into that, that sort of in-between in between area. Maybe we can take a look sure. at the, the crabs real quick. And I'm then, guessing uh, kids are climbing up here to yeah, absolutely. check them out. That's that's the idea. Ah, so these are what are painted on the walls out there. Yeah, yeah. So outside, you know, they're they're sculpted ex exhibitry, but these are the real thing. Um, this is kind of mimicking, you know, a, a tidal area. There's actually like a bucket with a hinge that fills with water and kind of dumps and okay. creates that sort of wave effect. Nice. But these are Sally Lightfoot crabs are the main ones you're seeing here. Um, they, I, 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 you know, I'm not an animal expert. There's people, better people to do this, but yeah, you know, telling you what I know, I know that they're, uh, I've heard they're fairly territorial and they've kind of scouted out their, their preferred areas of, of the, uh, the habitat. Um, they look like, uh, Astros colors. Yeah, yeah, there you go. For, yeah. For Houston there. Home, hometown crabs. Yeah. Opening weekend. Yep. Kind of come out of the, the tunnel down into this big open area. So what, what's going on? Here in this uh, in this space. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, this is really a, a chance for there to be a people exhibit for the sea lions. Um, uh, we get to see them, you know, uh, uh, the, this back part of their habitat. Um, this uh, uh, has a little, like, has like 18 inches of water across the top to where basically they can swim over the top of the tunnel uh, and um, get really, you know, awfully close as you're about to see. Yep. Um, this, uh, the, as far as the construction of the tunnel, um, this is about five inch thick acrylic. Um, it was actually assembled uh, in, I think, in Italy, and then brought in as one single piece, about 35,000 pounds. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, and uh, Telepson, the builder. Yeah, there you uh, go. Right there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? That's wild. Um, I think the Telepson, the builder, actually had to like soap it up, like you know, to, to kind of squeeze <laughs> it in. There was like, inches of tolerance, yeah, wow. kind of getting getting this in place. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this never gets old. I can tell you, even when you when you work at the zoo and see it, it's really a, a Wonderful space. I love the quality of light too, like the dappled light yeah. from from uh, the light passing through the water. It's really cool. And uh, my, you know, my first thoughts is like how much pressure is on that yeah. on that wall, right? And it's you know we deal with that all the time, sizing pumps and things like that. So sort of every two point three one feet that you go up, it's one more pound of pressure from the water. So when you get down to the lower levels, even though it's you know maybe only eight ten feet, it's a significant amount of pressure. Yeah. Uh, pushing on on these walls so no doubt in engineering is you know is, is pretty pretty impressive here this is a moment where you can really appreciate it yeah absolutely this is cool yeah so now we're going to transition to our our shared ocean gallery this is one of the things that's unique about um, the Galapagos Islands exhibit for the Houston Zoo is it's our first 
uh, the first time we really embedded a take action message for guests. So I mentioned sort of the, the mission of, of the exhibit as a whole um, to communicate to people that we're sharing this ocean with Galapagos and you can you know, do your part to reduce um, hazards to wildlife uh, and, and environmental pollutants like plastic. Um, but this just connects to the Houston Zoo's mission. You know, right. it's, it's, we're, we're trying to um, connect communities to animals and you know, inspire action to save wildlife. Um, so this is one of those moments where people can really start to understand what they can what they can actually do. Um, so obviously the focus of the gallery is single-use plastics. Um, here we're talking about these these sources of, of single-use plastics that the right. Houston Zoo has phased out over the years. I know we talked, we about, talked about that about last a time bit. too. Yep. Yeah, last time. Um, so this just gives some idea of scale of all the um, environmental pollutants that we're kind of keeping out, keeping out of the environment by having phased these out. And a lot of the messaging around here talks about why some of these plastics are a problem. You know, plastic bags, just for one example, can be mistaken as looking like jellyfish and right. eaten by sea turtles. Um, but this is something that, that people now, you know, kind of know what, what they can do. And we've seen some really positive results in um, some evaluators that we've, we've hired and, and had um, come look at which, mes which messages are sticking with mm -hmm. guests. And this is one that really is sticking. Uh, and it's fantastic to see the, the results of the intent of this exhibit to communicate that to, right. to guests. It, it really is resonating. And I'm sure like it stands out for kids a lot too. I remember, remember yeah. the things we used to do in elementary school around Earth Day and stuff right. like that. And kind of remember some of those things sticking out. So I imagine this definitely resonates with, with kids to see it like this. So yeah. it's very cool. Absolutely. In the back of the exhibit is a uh, or uh, real jellyfish, not, yeah, not yeah, plastic yeah, right, bags. right. Our sea nettle, which are a type of a type of jelly, that looks like it would hurt. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend uh, touching. But I, I think this is just one of those really fascinating ones you can kind of get sucked into. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, this is like an animation you can just sit here and watch. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. You know, just kind of coming around the corner here to this awesome aquarium. Can you let us know what's going on here? Got a yeah, absolutely. Sea turtle crawl around over there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, this this one ocean aquarium um, is uh, um, this is about two hundred thousand gallons. It's it's separate from the sea lion's it's habitat. Big. Yep, it's it's still a big one. Um, we have everything from um, black tip reef sharks, bonnet head sharks, um, cow nose raised. You know, a, a bunch of fish, puffer fish. Uh, that's Bobby, our <laughs> our sea turtle. Um, Bobby's actually, checking us out. Yep, yep. She's, a, she's actually a, a, a rescue who um, we, we tried to release back in the wild. She, she has a, a little bit of a buoyancy issue with her shell, so she's uh, come to call um, the, the Houston Zoo home. Oh, wow. um, so she's one of the stars. Um, I've, I've heard that the, the real kind of alpha in the tank, though, is the puffer fish. Uh, he huh. is, he's the, the, the bully and the, you know, one of the, the, the feistiest one, I guess. That's funny. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah, but from, from a design perspective, um, yeah, this, uh, these coral were made of fiberglass um, off-site and basically cut into a bunch of pieces, reassembled. Um, fiberglass was chosen because it, it wouldn't impact the pH of the water like concrete would, like mm. sculpted concrete. Okay. Um, it's actually based on 3D scans um, from the Galapagos, so it's really, is, the coral oh, is, wow. is mimicking exactly the type of thing you'd see in the Galapagos Islands. Um, We'd even done a test of making sure the color was going to look right. They, they look a lot more vibrant when they're kind of out, sure, uh, out which, of the water. But start to lose the color underwater. Yeah, yeah, you get some different kind of color effects. Um, you know, the, one of the I think the neat design, uh, you know, effects is that it looks like it just fades into yes. the, you know, miles of ocean depth. Yep. It, it's really something like 30 feet back, uh, and kind of drops off to where fish can look like they are swimming up. You know, as well as just kind of fading off. In, in, into right. the background. Okay, gives that feel of being on the shelf and then just kind of out in nothingness, yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. But yeah, really, really wonderful moment. Again, like like the uh, um, the gallery we just passed through, super zen and kind of real peaceful peaceful spot and you know, we could find sort of a private moment here. And it's going to feel amazing in July and August in here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, 100%. An air-conditioned exhibit in, in Houston, Texas is, is definitely popular. Yeah, we've now gone from the ocean and we're kind of coming back up to the surface. Mm -hmm. So we have these sort of interstitial areas, which is this is replicating like a mangrove, uh, you know, a, a low kind of a shallow water uh, ecosystem. So a few you know, interesting folks in, in, in this tank, right? And that kind of mangrove root, root effect. Yeah, it's cool. It's a lot of different. I mean, it's just crazy the, the variety of species that you've seen yeah. throughout the exhibit. It's really cool. All in one place. 
And here's sort of the, I mean, one of the stars of the show are our, our penguins. So uh, again, these are not the exact penguins you'd see in the Galapagos. Uh, Galapagos penguins are among the most endangered penguins in the world. Okay. I think, I think they are the most endangered. There's something like only 2,000 left. But, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So these are humble penguins who um, are naturally from like off the coast of uh, Chile uh, and, and South America. Um, so they're, you know, accustomed to warmer, warmer weather. Sure. Um, I think we have 15. Uh, they actually just, uh, oh, watch out, buddy. Uh, <laughs> they've actually just started pairing off um, for, for breeding. Um, but they're really, they're, they are like the sea lions, they are playful and charismatic. They, they interact with people and, and, you know, we'll be swimming back and forth. The kids really love this. It's, it's oh, yeah. one of those, um, those kind of really magical moments. But. Yeah, it's really cool. I, and the, I was, you know, reading up on it, obviously, because you don't expect to see penguins in, in Houston. And so, uh, I thought it was interesting, they're used to the, the heat, but not so much the humidity and the mosquitoes. So yeah. still somewhat of a conditioned environment here, right? Absolutely, yeah. They have a separate HVAC system um, uh, that not only is to kind of keep them climate controlled you know, in the appropriate, they're in the, in the 60 something degrees uh, of, of air temperature as well as water in here. Um, but also they're fairly uh, like kind of dirty, stinky <laughs> animals. So like the, the separate HVAC uh, is, is also um, you know, necessary for, for, for that reason. Um, you, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, they do have a, a skylight. They need access to natural light mm. and the UV from it. So there's a, a skylight that basically has no treatment. Let, it's letting in, cool. you know, it's just, it's just a clear glass uh, skylight. Um, other stuff to highlight here, you know, there's a, a reused piece of ac acrylic from a, our previous aquarium um, that's a part of the acrylic uh, viewing here in this exhibit. Okay. All right, so we're, we're kind of wrapping up the you know, the front of the exhibit here. And uh, it was really cool to be able to see all the different animals and kind of the, the you know, the change in that type of exhibit. So Kali, why don't you talk a little bit about what, what you got going on here with all the partnerships and uh, just kind of wrap up this, this part of the segment for us. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of the last area of the exhibit here, the Saving Our Shared Ocean uh, area, which is really a chance just for us to talk more about our partnerships uh, across the world and in particular uh, in the Galapagos Islands. So that's, that's what a lot of the messaging uh, is about. Again, Houston Zoo has dozens of partnerships where we're saving wildlife across the world. And when you come to the zoo, I mean, your admissions are going towards those partnerships. They're going right. towards saving animals uh, in, in the wild. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, appreciate it, sir. Yeah, it's awesome. good to see you again. Yeah, I'll leave you in good hands with Mark to talk about the back of house. Awesome.